In this episode of Sound Seekers Presents Testimony, a Musician's Story, I talked to songstress Aisha Woods. Now, Aisha Woods was signed to Toby Max Go To Records back in the day, so we talk about all that. She now is a mother of four and owns her own independent label. So we talk about that motherhood work-life balance. She just dropped a new EP, Full Circle. She breaks down four songs from that EP, Indebted, Goals featuring Toby Mac, Safe featuring Jay Hill. Who's Jay Hill? We talk about that. And If You Say, and she sings those songs, y'all. So get ready to hear her beautiful voice. Not mine, because I'm not a singer. And we talk about that as well. <laughs> I am Gilika Brown, and this is Sound Seekers Presents Testimony, a Musician's Story. Let's talk about the beginning. Um, your first music memory. When you think of music, I don't know if it's a song or a music video or, I don't know, playing your first instrument. Like, what's your first music memory? Really, my first music memory... Uh, is my my parents invested in little instruments for us and um, and I had a hornica. I don't know if if you know what that is. A it's, you, that's a horn. No. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough, right? It, <laughs> it was like um, like a keyboard, but you you blew into it. Oh, okay. And pressed the keys. I've seen those before. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I, I think that's probably my earliest uh, music memory, um, having one of those and just thinking I was a superstar, just <laughs> going to town, blowing my little hornica. Were but, you any good at it or was it just an annoyance to your parents? <laughs> oh, gosh, probably um, a little of both, to be okay. perfectly honest. Um, you got to start somewhere, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Not long after um, I had the Hornica, they got a little keyboard for okay. me. And so um, just something to get me familiarized with the keys on a, on a keyboard or a piano. And um, so, yeah, that a little bit of both. Okay. <laughs> the Hornica. I haven't heard that word before, but I will remember it now. <laughs> And you were born in Long Island, New York. I was, but yeah, I was born. In... And you were raised in Bermuda, though. Mm -hmm. Early okay. on, um, my my parents are uh, Bermudian. My my family, most of my family is Bermudian, and um, and my folks were living abroad at the time. Um, well, when I was born, so. Uh, I am the only American of yeah. my siblings. Okay. There are three of us. Um, and I mean, really, shortly after I was born, my family moved back to Bermuda. So, um, and we left Bermuda in 1987, I believe it was, uh, and came back to the States and... Uh, between 87 and 2001, uh, we spent most of our time in Florida mm -hmm. and some time in uh, Georgia and some time in Hawaii. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> you guys <were> yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, lived in Texas, uh, moved to Texas in 2001. And stayed into in Texas until 2013, and now I'm back in good old Florida. <laughs> My husband is from Florida. He was born and raised here, and I met him here. So, when you say that you were raised somewhere, do you claim a specific place, or do you have to go through that whole explanation? <laughs> um, I was raised early on in Bermuda okay and uh yeah and I've, I've lived in a number of different places but Bermuda is is where my roots are and so those of us for those of us who know nothing about 
Bermuda and that life? How was it growing up there? Bermuda is a beautiful place. Um, it's often uh, mistaken for a Caribbean island and it's actually not a Caribbean island. It's, um, it's about a thousand miles off the coast of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a little British Commonwealth. It's still under the queen. And um, although many people say, you know, they're going on a cruise to the Caribbean and they include Bermuda. Okay. Um, it's not technically a Caribbean island, um, but we, uh, we definitely, um, how can I say? Well, at, at heart, we are Caribbean people, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Um, we eat Caribbean food and we listen to Caribbean music and, you know, uh, our culture is definitely um, uh, Caribbean in feel. Mm. Um, and with with a British flair, I guess. <laughs> and so it's a, it's a little melting pot, a cultural melting pot. And, um, and it's unlike anywhere you've ever been it's it's really really beautiful and I'm not just saying that no I believe you just because <laughs> because I'm from Bermuda originally but um, no, yeah. it is a beautiful place yeah you don't have to convince me of that <laughs> where are you from I'm from California okay all right it's known Bermuda, I like California. but we have a lot of different <laughs> climates and areas. And if you want the beach or the river or the desert or the mountains and yeah. the snow, like we got it all. So yeah, that's awesome. I like California. Yeah. And did you grow up because you said your parents, so I'm assuming you were raised in a two parent household. Yes. And was it a Christian household? It was um, my actually I came up early on in a more religious setting um, and my folks got divorced when I was 10 and, uh, and then uh, in 80, 1987, my mom started over completely. Um, and we moved to Florida from Bermuda and um, she just started afresh. So it was her, uh, my siblings and myself. And uh, she was a, a single mom for a number of years. And, um, and she married my dad uh, in 93, okay. 90, yeah. 93 and that's who um who raised me I I um I say my dad a, a lot of people would say stepdad and um that that word kind of offends me okay. <laughs> because he's he's my dad and he he's who raised me and and took care of me and and really looked out for our family and so um we he was in ministry still mm -hmm. is um and uh so i came from a two two parent home and thank god for that and when did you personally give your life over to christ i made that commitment um when i was about 12 um i had the opportunity to go to um, a service and I saw something that I had never seen before. I saw, I saw flags being raised and, and banners, uh, in the service being flown. And, and, um, I heard music that I had never heard before, um, I saw people down on their knees. I saw some folks with their hands raised. And um, as I said early on, I came up in a very religious, really traditional uh, setting. 
And so to come into this setting um, and see people worshiping God, and I was, I was taken aback. And um, I just kind of looked and I, I said, God, whatever it is that they have, I want that. Yeah. <laughs> and it just, it, it was, it seemed authentic and it seemed just real and personal. And, um, and so that night at that, um, it, it might've even been a revival or, or something, but that night at that service is when I gave my life to Christ. And uh, actually it was me and my, my cousin and we went up and they had a little altar call and they prayed over us and, and you know, the rest is history. So was, were these two different denominations then? Is that why mm -hmm. the difference was? Okay. Yeah, and, for sure. And was this a service or a church that your parents were attending then? Like, how did you end up there? <laughs> no, actually, um, we had some family and friends uh, that flew into Florida um, they wanted to be a part of this service and okay. and my mom she was only familiar with it at the time she didn't it was um, it was not a church that we attended and she just knew where how to get there okay and so um, we were there just by happenstance but in actuality it wasn't happenstance because you know God had a plan evidently and did and, you um, continue to go to that church yourself then? We did. Okay. We started going to that church, which is, is amazing. Uh, just how God, you know, he has a, a way of doing things and it's so far outside of <laughs> what we have in mind. And, and uh, it's always amazing. So yeah, we started going there and uh, it was... Uh, I think we went there for about two years mm -hmm. and then my mom met my dad. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So you're 12 years old. You make this huge commitment. Was mm -hmm. that something that, I mean, from 12 to now, that's a huge gap. There has to be, yeah. how is that, how has that been in between like that flow where there moments where you were just like okay this is too difficult or Jesus you hang out <laughs> over there I'm gonna kind of do my thing over here come back to you a little bit later like how was all that yeah. um I think every every teenager has a funky spot you know um and in my early teens um I was trying to find myself and um and make sense of of who it is that God has made me and so I mean it was just that awkward 13 14 year old you know yeah girl um and um but later in my teens I started to really, really dig in um, and develop a, a hunger and, and a thirst for God. And in that time, man, he just started to reveal himself to me and in a really um, amazing way. Like he started to give me songs. Mm. And um I mean, I, I always had a love for music and I always played instruments. Um, but after I came to be in relationship with the father, it was then that he just started to show himself to me in that way. And so um, early on, like I would write about other people's experiences and and things that they would share with me I would I would write songs about and then uh I started to have my own experiences mm -hmm. and I would write about my own realities and um and so it 
it developed in that form. And um, so it's always been just a, a progressive um, movement in my life. Um, and I mean, just, I've had my, my typical weird spots, you know, over the years, but, um, but God has remained faithful through it all, you know, and he's, he's shielded and protected me from so many crazy things. I just look back and I'm like, man, God, <laughs> you're so, so good. So mm-hmm. good to us. And, um, but yeah. Okay. So now you're married and you have four kids. I do. And you just had a, a new one, the one who's yes. here now. <laughs> <laughs> I hear him twisting. I think he has to burp. <laughs> and how many months is he? He is two months old. Okay. Yeah. So what's, 10 the, weeks. what's the oldest age? Uh, our boys are eight years old, uh, six years old, four years old, and the baby that's 10 weeks old today. 10 weeks to eight years old. Okay. Yeah. All boys. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's pretty awesome. Um, my sister had three boys and then oh, yeah. on the fourth, she got her girl. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, we were, tr- we were trying and we just, <laughs> we thought we would have a girl, but when this last one came, it's just like, okay, I'm supposed to be a boy mom. Okay. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> you plan on putting together like a boy choir or something? <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Our boys all <laughs> sing and they are, um, they're all musically inclined. So awesome. yeah, yeah. We put them to work and, and just try and cultivate the gifts that we see in them, you know? So how does God's presence look like in your life personally, outside of the music? We'll get to the music coming up, but just personally, how does God's presence look like in your life? Wow. Um, Every day that I, I get up and I look at my, my husband and I look at my boys um, and I see God's provision in our life. It's just a reminder when, whenever I have the opportunity to serve, um, and I see the ways that God has made the things that he's done. It's just, it's a reminder. And that's where I, I feel his presence most, you know? Um, just looking back and in retrospect, just seeing his goodness and faithfulness in our lives. That's man, it's, it's something that'll just kind of bring you to tears almost, you know? So, and let's move forward into the music now. So you said that God would give you like the gift of like instruments, Mm -hmm. Uh, how did you, would you say with that, in addition to the, uh, I forgot the word of it already. <laughs> Horn, hornica? Hornica. <laughs> <laughs> um, where would you say you got your, your music start? Um, well, on a, on a professional level or? Just, um, no, before you discovering like, this is a gift God has given me. This okay. This is what I want to pursue. Um, I, I won tickets to, uh, a Christian music concert at a water park. Um, and on the bill was Crystal Lewis, Avalon, and one other band. I can't remember, but, uh, when Crystal Lewis came up and did her set, I was like, oh man, this is so good. I so want to do this, <laughs> you know? Um, and her, her 
style of music, her voice, um, her musicianship, it just, it, it wowed me. And, and she seemed genuine um, and, and really passionate about, about the ministry aspect of, um, of her music. And when I saw that, I just was like, okay, I wanna, I wanna do that. I wanna pursue um, this, this thing that God had put in me. And I, um, I would sing my songs for uh, different people. And then uh, folks started asking me if I had a tape. There was no uh, CDs, there were, there were no uh, MP3s or anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they would ask me, do you have a tape? You got a tape? And I'm like, mm, no, I don't have a tape. And, uh, and one year I, I took my tax return and, um, and I invested in myself and, uh, and did my first recording. And wow. yeah, and so... so <laughs> You said um, you took your tax return. So were you like what early twenties at this point? Like to- yeah, I was. I was twenty one actually. Okay. Woo! Twenty <laughs> years ago, Lord yeah. have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a big investment in yourself. Yeah. You can think I'm gonna take my tax return and go to the studio. Right. Yeah, and and God honored it. You know. He honored How so? Did he honor that? And um, I ended up recording my very first uh, independent project that was called What You Do To Me. Um, and um, I, I met my husband. Um, and so all of that really paid off in a, in a big way. <laughs> um, he helped me. Uh, he introduced me to a producer uh-huh. um, and we went to the studio and uh, I, I, well, let me back up. I met him at a music workshop. Okay. And, uh, and I thought that um, they, they had a little artist showcase mm-hmm. at the end of the workshop. And I thought that um, it was it was my break, if you will. I had to sing at the at the showcase. Okay. And and I met a number of people after that uh, showcase, and him he was one of the people that I met. And um, maybe two weeks later, he called, and um, and we connected. We connected at a little Denny's mm-hmm. uh, in in Central Florida here, and um, and then he was like, "Well, what are you doing with your music? What are you doing? You know, what do you want to do?" And I'm here. I am waiting on on God to do something big, and God's like waiting on me to step out. <laughs> yeah. And I I just needed I needed some help. Yeah. You know. Guidance. Yeah. And, and so. Um, he was right there and uh, introduced me to a producer. And we went in the studio and I recorded two songs and we put those two songs on a disc. And I, um, shortly thereafter, my family moved to Dallas, Texas. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so me and my husband, we were, we just maintained a friendship after I, I left and moved away um, and I came back maybe a year later and recorded a full record. Okay. And, uh, and that was my first independent project, um, full length and Toby Mac, uh, exec of Goatee Records, mm-hmm. he heard my independent project that I recorded and got in touch with me and, uh, and then I went from being independent to being on Goatee Records. Sweet. So, okay. Yeah, it's it's interesting, just kind of how it has. Yeah, how it all comes together. Do you mind if I? 
Go ahead. Can I stick a pacifier in his mouth real quick? <laughs> Hang on, let me get these. Oh, no, no problem. I call him my turkey. That's my turkey sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you were on goatee and you're no longer on goatee now. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, I, I came off of goatee in 2010 when I got married um, and started a family. I mean, I had, I had known my husband for, gosh, for nine years and, um, and we got married in 2010 and started doing everything independently. Okay. And I've been an independent ever since. And you have your own label, Original Peace Music? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how, let's talk about the balance between motherhood and being a working artist. Like, is there <laughs> such thing as life balance? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's uh there's a such thing as um making an attempt <laughs> you know and I, I thank god for his grace because uh it's we're a work in progress you know mm -hmm. and uh and some days are definitely much better than others um and it is tough but i thank god that um that i've got great help I mean, great help. Like, like my hubby, he's, he's just been awesome from ever since day one. And, um, and my grandmother lives with us. And so she, she helps out quite a bit. Um, Wait, and I'm sorry, you said your grandma? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of people um, actually, they think that she's my mother yeah and I'm like nope she's she's amazing she's she's a great grand for our boys yeah and um I mean this this lady gets around she's <laughs> sometimes I'm like granny I need to give you a curfew <laughs> you know is she um, from Bermuda she is it must be that born and bred <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> So I'm like, Lord, give me those good genes. Yes. And uh, you would you would never know, honest to goodness. Someone actually just yesterday thought that she was in her 60s. Um, and she's and she's she yeah. in? Sorry. What is what age range is she in? She's in her 80s. OK. Yep. Um, and get so it. I, OK. Yep. <laughs> I thank God for help. So, yes. yeah. And she is able to help me um, with maintaining a healthy balance um, and my husband. And so, um, and um, just maintaining a, a mindset of service helps also, mm -hmm. you know, um, I have the opportunity to uh, serve here at a church uh, in Tavares, I'm sorry. And I lead worship. In where, I'm sorry, where are you at? I'm in Tavares, it's just outside of Orlando. Okay. About, mm, shucks, maybe 35 miles outside of Orlando. Okay. Yeah, and um, I've been on board here at the church for a, a little over a year. Okay, cool. Congratulations. One sec. Thank you. Okay. Can you hold just one yeah. sec? Yeah, he's. Let's see if I can get him to go back to sleep. Okay. <laughs> so now we. And what's his name? His name is Gade. Gade. Like, G -A -D -E. yeah, like without the E. Okay. G A D. Gade. G A D. We have we have Joseph, we have Benjamin, okay. We have Asher, and now Gabe. So um, they are brothers of Joseph Got in the Bible. It. Yeah, so one of the uh, twelve tribes, but we're stopping at four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
That's it. <laughs> So for those listening to the podcast, Gade has just entered in. So those on YouTube can see Gade. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have recently released an EP, Full Circle. Yes. And um, why the decision to release this EP now? Um, well, it's been three years since uh, we serviced the fan base with music, new music. My last project was the Runway Project. And, um, and that was in 17. Mm-hmm. And we we, it, we just felt like it was time. Um, and even with this global pandemic, you know, um, it couldn't be a better time to to release some of the material that we have. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we're we're excited about the project. I I think that it's um, our best independent effort yet. Okay. Um, really proud of it. And uh, so yeah, full circle. Full circle just came out last week. And I'm trying to be cognitive of your time. So we're approaching 240. Um, I did have one more section, our four song breakdown, where you would um, recite or sing a verse from four songs that I selected and then talk about it. Okay. I don't know. We can go for it. We can go for it. Okay. So (laughs) the four songs that I selected for you were Indebted, Goals featuring Toby Mac, Safe featuring Jay Hill, and If You Say. All right. So if you don't mind starting with Indebted, just choose a verse of your choice and either sing it or recite it, and then we'll just go between the lines of the song. All right. Let me <laughs> let me get the right key here. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Feels kind of high. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just come down from there. That's too high for me right now. Um, so indebted, yeah. Again, it is. It's just a heartfelt cry of thanks to the Father. You know, as as we were talking about earlier, just looking in, in retrospect where He's brought us from and um, how great he has been to us and for us Um, and the chorus just says if there's anything you need me to say I'll say it anywhere you want me to go I'm going if there's anything you need me to do I'll do it I'm forever indebted forever indebted if there's anything you need me to say I'll say it anywhere you want me to go I'm going if there's anything you need me to do I'll do it forever indebted forever indebted to you nice (laughs) <laughs> thanks do you sing too i do not i'm not going to even attempt i am a fan of music <laughs> i know my lane I like all right y'all but i'm not going to try to do what you do <laughs> i hear you <sighs> i karaoke though i karaoke well <laughs> okay that's a lot of fun <laughs> uh, let's move on to goals featuring goals all right so goals is actually the the title um, is an acronym for God over all life's successes. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And um, and that acronym came from um, my husband teaching uh, one night at a Bible study, and that was his topic. So I I kind of. Um, jacked him for his title and and a part of the song goes um I guess I'll do a little reggae part says 
Well, it's God over all life successes, cause we know it's him alone who holds all the blessing. Without the father's love, I live a life of stressing. So never we take any of the glory or the credit. Oh, we said, yeah, we depending on you. You're the only one who can see we through because you did it before you can do it again where life is in your hands. Let's go. Hey, yes. <laughs> the reggae, even though Bermuda isn't Caribbean. Right. <laughs> so um, why the, the Caribbean vibe and why Toby Mac on that Caribbean vibe song? You know what? Um, Toby, well, to start, the, the record is called Full Circle. It's my little guy, he's yawning. <laughs> it's all good, get it, get it. Get it. Get it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so much. Um, the record's called Full Circle. And um, years ago, well, my first independent project, Toby um, got his hands on it um, at, in the Caribbean. He was in Jamaica and he got his hands on my, my first indie project. And when I signed with Goatee, we reproduced uh, a number of songs that were on the indie project. And, uh, and Toby ended up being featured on uh, two of those songs. And so here we are, you know, we've come full circle. And um, even as the song has a Caribbean twist, um, for Toby to, to get on it and, and bless us with, uh, with the feature, it just kind of helps to bring the whole title full circle into full perspective. Um, and I mean, it's been a lot of years and I'm grateful that he got on the, on the track and, and did his thing. I love it. And yeah. So yeah, we've just come full circle. Awesome. Okay. Even with Toby. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And let's move forward to Safe featuring Jay Hill, who I'm not familiar with. But... Uh huh. <laughs> Jay Hill, my husband. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. That's why <laughs> it's hilarious because the last so week. many people. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's it's been um, it's funny. Like every day since the the record has um, dropped, somebody's asking who's Joe who, who's Jay Hill <laughs> who's Jay Hill, and we these are even family members and close <laughs> friends. Who's Jay? Who's just okay guys, cats out of the bag. Um it's Joe. So um safe. Oh let's see. Mm. So I can be in a hurricane they can say evacuate for it's Tornadoes tearing up anything that's in its way. Earthquakes, worlds falling down around me. But as long as you are with me, baby, I am safe. It <laughs> was beautiful. Thanks. And okay, so if family don't even know who Jay Hill is, <laughs> why um, why make this appearance on the track? Everything about this project is completely full circle. Um, again, my very first independent independent project. Uh, it was produced and recorded uh, in Central Florida before we moved away, my family moved away. Um, and my husband, he was only a friend at the time. 
um, but he was very much involved with every aspect of that project. Um, and um, as, as he was with this project, mm -hmm. um, involved with the writing and, and production. And um, we even had the opportunity to work with some of the same producers mm -hmm. that we worked with 20 years ago. Uh, yeah, um, and so, uh, but he's always been, uh, how can I say, a behind the scenes guy. And um, just a tremendous supporter. And yeah. he's always pushed me and been amazing at that. And uh, on this project, it was like, you know what? I'm gonna push you and you, <laughs> you can do a little something on here. Um, he wrote the second verse. Okay. And, um, and so uh, he, was, he was a bit reluctant about doing it, but um, I'm glad that he did. And, <laughs> and I think everybody else is glad too. <laughs> Because it, it's it's a great song. It is a great song. And it's cool that you yeah. guys have a song together now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, and the last song is If You Say. If You Say. Um, actually, <clears throat> If You Say is... Um, that song was written by the uh, pastor that officiated... Uh, our wedding. Oh wow! Really, and he, circle. <laughs> everything. Uh huh. Yep, completely. <laughs> and um, so I mean, shoot, we we go way back. <laughs> Him and my husband, uh, they were in a group together oh. many years ago. So, um, so if you say is a really really special song to us all, and um, it just a little bit of it. Well, I just I don't know how I don't know how old you are, but I just thought about um, on in Living Color back in the day, and yeah. he says, uh, "I wrote a little song. You want to hear? He go. go. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> also, I was thinking of um, Black Streets, No Diggity. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or no, who else doesn't know? In Vogue, yeah, yeah, free your mind. Wrote a song, want to hear it? Here it goes. That's right, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, I don't feel, um, I don't feel too old. <laughs> no, I'm right I was around. <laughs> yeah. All right, so if you say it says, Lord, if you say. To meet me on the water, I'll say, Lord, here I come. And if you say that you will never leave me, I'll say, let your will be done. If you say. If you say. A little bit of it. Again, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So does this little guy get the privilege of like having lullabies and just songs sung to him <laughs> to, to woo him to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> he just stares at me when I sing to him. Sometimes he'll smile and sometimes he'll giggle. And other times he'll just be as stoic as, as stoic can be. <laughs> So, yeah, we sing to all our boys. Yeah. Well, Are you singing? And, um, <laughs> all right, so let's move on to how does God's presence look like in your life musically? We talked personally. What about musically? Mm -hmm. Musically, um, I believe in the lyrics that are written. 
um, the songs that that I write, they come from a deep place of being in relationship with him. And so when it is translated into uh, music and songs um, and it comes out, that's when I'm like, okay, God, I, I know that you, that you gave this to me, mm-hmm. you know, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that thrifty. I'm not that smart or clever. I know that, that God gave me um, songs. And so um, that for me, that just kind of solidifies and, and validates his presence, you know, in, in my life and in my writing. Um, and then when I hear um, of how certain songs minister to, to people, they'll tell me their stories and I'm like, golly, that's, that's awesome to hear. You know, they'll just share how they were going through something and, and this song spoke to them uh, this particular period of time in their life. And, you know, that kind of thing is just like, okay, um, it's, it's obvious this thing is much bigger than myself and, um, and God is, is all in it. So, yeah. All right on. Yeah, that's powerful. Okay, my final question for you is now that you've gone through this okay. interview process, who would you like to see me interview? Mm, I'd like to see you interview uh Mm. maybe <laughs> maybe Toby that would be cool yeah that would be cool I'd love to interview yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I'll say Toby Hey, what's up? Thank you. Thank you for listening to the show. Thank you for watching the show. However you consume us, thank you. Please subscribe to the show. And if you really enjoy the content, please leave a, re- please leave a review. It really does help with the ranking of the show. And if you want to go an extra mile, share the show. Share this episode. And for all things testimony, visit testimonystories.com. Until next time, I'm Gilika Brown, the music lover constantly seeking positive music. Hey, what's up? I, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And I seriously thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to the podcast, for watching the podcast, however you consume us. Thank you. Please subscribe to the show. And if you really enjoy the content, please leave a review. It really does help with the rankings of the show. If you want to go an extra mile, share the show. And for all things testimony, visit testimonystories.com. Until next time, I'm Gilika Brown, the music lover constantly seeking positive music.